great. So where are you guys from? Oxford. Oxford? Excellent. Not too far away. So my name is MJ Drake. I am a food animal field service veterinarian. So I'm a large animal veterinarian and right behind you is my office. So that is my truck. And so I actually go out to farm and I go farm to farm um, in the area and, and serving the kind of community around here. So most of my day is spent either with cows, mostly dairy cows, sometimes an occasional beef cow um, or with sheep and goats. And so those are about 50 50 of my time is with cattle and then sheep and goats and then occasionally a pig in our alpaca. But I try and avoid the pigs. So anyway, um, but yeah, so I work out of my truck. All my medical supplies are there. Um, and then that way um, I have everything I need to kind of um, look at our patients on farm. So is anyone here interested in veterinary medicine thinking about, yeah? So that's okay, yeah, awesome. Well, I mean, now's a good time. If you're thinking about it, it's a, a great time to get involved and learn more. Um, so thanks for being here today. Um, but so as veterinarians, um, you know, our jobs are a little bit harder because, um, you know, we wanna be able to diagnose and. and a disease or a problem with an animal, a sick animal, but they cannot tell us what's going on, at least not vocalize it the same way that um, people can when they go to the doctor and you're like, oh, my arm hurts, like, and you can tell the doctor how you're feeling. And so we have to use um, all of our kind of context clues um, about the cow to try and figure out what's going on. And that's why I love veterinary medicine, because each patient is a puzzle that you have to try and solve. Okay, and so um, some of the things um, that we might do um, are to look at the cow from far away. And so we usually start our physical exam. And so that's what we do on in order to diagnose um, you know, disease and problems with a cow, we do a physical exam, a really good physical exam. And so um, I teach you know, these vet students um, here that, that are gonna be helping us today. Um, it's really important to both look from far away as well as close up. And so we start from far away and we look at the attitude of the cow or the mentation of the cow. So what do you guys think kind of looking at this cow? Um, does she, well, now she looks a little dopey, but um, how, do you think she's, you know, um, alert, awake, um, anything? What's your thoughts? Relaxed? Yeah, I agree. And if you came here three minutes ago, she was chowing down on this food too. And so that's usually a good sign too, is that we look at their um, appetite and that they're still eating and drinking, that they're, um, you know, passing manure and, and urinating and all those sort of kind of normal bodily functions. Because, you know, a, a cow that is eat is, you know, feeling well enough that she still wants to eat. And so when they stop eating, that's usually a bad sign. And so, um, now she's getting a little intimidated because we're all like hanging around her face. But anyway, so we, we take a look at the cow from afar, looking at her mentation, her body condition, that sort of thing. And then we get close to the cow to start our uh, full physical exam. So I want you guys, if you can, to slide down this way. So have you guys had any sort of um, anatomy related to especially cows and ruminants? Excellent. Okay. It's, yeah, it's quiz time. So. Yeah, you guys can stand um, right around here if you'd like, or, or yeah, as long as you can see me. So when we um, start our physical exam on a cow, we actually want to start, sorry, we want to start um, at the back of the cow. Um, and so we can do this um, uh, just because they're, they're used to us, you know, being around their hind end, right? They get milk twice a day. They're used to people being around their udder, not so much around their face. And so we can um, start at the back of the cow and kind of, you know, like I said, take a look at her udder. And then I don't think she's going to do it because we've already done this before. But there's this fun party trick that you can do to try and get a cow to urinate. Have you guys ever seen this or heard about this? No? So if you rub this part of the cow, it's called the escutcheon. It's got a fun name. But if you rub this up and down by applying gentle pressure, the cow will usually urinate. And so the first thing we want to do as part of our physical exam is try and get a cow to urinate. Because if they urinate, we can take a sample of that and then submit it for more testing and we can look for um, different compounds in their urine that may indicate that they have a problem or not. Specifically ketones, if they have ketones in their urine. But we already made her do that before, so she's her bladder's empty, so we'll move on. Um, the other important thing we want to do back here is to get a temperature on her. So we take a rectal temperature on cows, right? You think about people and putting a thermometer in their mouth or in their ear and like the, the cow doesn't tolerate that. And so we, in a lot of species, we will take a rectal temperature. It's reliable um, and it gets a good sense of their core body temperature. Um, so you guys can take that today. 
And then once we finish kind of at the back end, then I move to the left side of the cow. So you can see this here, and this is my um, artistic work. So um, take it with a grain of salt. But the first thing we do is I usually start in the chest. So can anyone tell me what they think this might be? The heart, good, yes. Very um, anatomically correct uh, heart shape. But no, so we want to listen to the, the heart for any murmurs or arrhythmias. And it's important, it's not so much that the, the, um, the heart is in the elbow, but it's actually behind the elbow. So when you're listening to the heart to get a heart rate, you want to um, listen all the way up here. So you really have to tuck that stethoscope behind her elbow to hear her heart. And you're gonna hear those love dub, love dub, love dub. And so um, their normal heart rate for a cow is 60 to 80 beats per minute. So I hope that you guys can all today hear the heart and get a heart rate on the cow. And we do that by counting how many beats are in 15 seconds. So you watch your, we um, take a look at our watch and we count how many beats are in 15 seconds. And then we multiply that by four, right? Cause there's fours, 15 minute quarters in a minute. Um, so we multiply whatever we get by four to get our beats per minute. And then after we listen to the heart, we'll listen to the lungs. So the um, lungs are right, right about here in a cow. And so we listen down here in the middle and up top. Um, they have pretty small lung fields compared to say like, um, sorry, horse species and such. Um, but the dividing line here is the diaphragm. So everything kind of in front of this is the chest or the thorax. And then everything behind the diaphragm is the abdomen. Okay. And so then moving into the, sorry, the abdomen of the cow, um, we can think about her um, gastrointestinal anatomy. Okay. And so when that cow's eating, um, the esophagus um, comes and opens up into this one big um, fermentation vat. Do you guys know what this is called? This whole big green thing here? It is the rumen. Good. Very good. Yeah. So um, remember how many compartments do cows have in their stomachs? Four, right? And so the first um, part that they encounter is the rumen. And that is closely associated with what other part compartment? Not the abomasum. Hmm? Not the large intestine. How about reticulum? Do you guys remember? The reticulum. So the rumen and reticulum. So the reticulum's up here, and the rumen function together to turn all of that feed material, all that hay around, and it's broken down by microbes, right? So your bacteria, your protozoa, they break down that feed material. And then sometimes she may regurgitate some of that, right? And then do you see her kind of chewing her cud? Yeah, so that's her rechewing some of that um, that uh, plant material to break it down even smaller, and then it keeps churning. And so um, the rumen moves at a regular rate of usually about one to two contractions per minute. So I want you guys all to listen to the rumen right behind the last rib here, and you can actually hear those rumen contractions. She may only have one in a minute, but when she does, it's um, um, two like a really strong like. It sounds like ocean waves. It's actually, it's very satisfying. And so I hope you guys can all hear one today, a really good room and contraction. And so, um, uh, like I said, we can hear that back here. And then if it's churning at that rate, one to two um, contractions per minute, that indicates that she has good uh, room and motility and good room and health. And then one more thing over here. Does anyone want to take a gander what this pink blob is? It's another organ. I don't know. Hmm? Not the pancreas, no, no. The liver. liver, not the liver, so there's an S. Spleen. spleen, good, yeah, so the spleen lives on the left, good, and over top of the rumen. But I also want you guys to appreciate that the rumen itself is huge. It takes up 50% of her abdomen, okay, on the left side of the cow. And so basically the left side of the, the cow's abdomen is rumen. And then all the other fun stuff is on the right side. So if you guys wanna kinda come around, we'll go over the right side really quickly. You can either, Go around front or come back around here. Okay. All right. Excuse me, ma'am. Nope. She says, nope. Okay. So we said the rumen reticulum is in that kind of first compartment. They function together to churn all of that feed material. And then um, once it's gotten to a small enough size, it then moves on, through, continues through the gastrointestinal tract. So what comes after the rumen reticulum? What's the next compartment? You guys know? 
No, almost, almost. There's one in between. It starts with an O. Kind of sounds like Abba Mason. O Mason, good, yes. So it, the O Mason is here in green. It's kind of about the size of a basketball normally. And what it does is it'll squeeze um, all the fluid um, out of the kind of the feed material before it gets to the abomasum, which is that um, fourth compartment here, which is analogous to our true stomach. So, right, it secretes acid, it secretes enzymes, um, and secretes all of that, um, those um, like proteases that will break down that feed material. So this is basically the same kind of structure as our stomach, as a horse's stomach, as a dog's stomach. And so that lives here, kind of on the right side in the lower part of the abdomen. So then once uh, all that feed material is broken down further, it then continues into the, through, goes through the pylorus, that sphincter there, and enters the duodenum, where it then kind of courses through the small intestines, and then we get to our large intestines and colon. Um, and then finally, you know, 24 hours later, it comes out the back end, okay? And so um, I didn't draw it here, but there are, you know, all of those other sort of um, small intestines and large intestines are um, within this part of the um, abdominal cavity, okay? So then two other structures. So what do you guys think this pink part might be? You guys said it in the last slide. But... Huh? Pancreas. Not the pancreas. Liver. liver. Liver, good, yeah. So the liver lives on the right side of the cow um, and, and takes up a lot of space right behind the diaphragm um, and sits right in front of the the omasum and the abomasum down here. And then up here, sitting kind of high up, is another important organ that's really important for filtering. Kidneys, good, yeah, so the kidneys are right here. So you can't hear the kidneys, but sometimes when we do abdominal surgery, we'll actually enter the abdomen through right here, and you can actually touch the kidneys and feel the kidneys. They do, yes. So this is graphically probably inaccurate, but yes, there are two kidneys that sit next to each other. Um, good. So. I won't talk much longer because I want you guys to um, get paired up with a cow and start to practice some of these physical exam skills. But I want you guys to take a temperature, get a heart rate, get a respiratory rate, and hear a room and contraction, okay? Go ahead. Uh, the cow's not going to kick me in the face if I stick this in his anus, is it? Um, no, they're pretty good about that. And one thing you can do is actually lift the tail like this and put it in her rectum like this. When you do this, you actually, the tail locks the hips so they can't kick out. But we'll have, you'll be paired with a student that will help you and make sure that you don't get kicked, okay? What about, what about surprise dropping? 